The average American consumes nearly 30 pounds of french fries a year. So you might think we've seen every single cut and style of fried spud there is to see. But as it turns out, there are more different ways to slice a potato than there are fries stuck under the back seat of a minivan. So today we're taking a look at every type of french fry cut we could find. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Foods channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other food compilations you would like to hear about. Okay, time to strap on your ketchup bandolier, because we have a mountain of fries to tackle. If someone asked you to close your eyes and picture a french fry, there's a good chance you'd be picturing a batonnet. It's the most popular shape of fry and the one you're most likely to be served in your average restaurant. Soft on the inside, crispy on the outside, covered in salt, and served with ketchup. You know these fries and their old friends. A batonnet cut, which is also commonly used in foods like carrots and cucumbers, results in a fry that is roughly two and a half inches long and a quarter inch thick. It looks like a little stick, which makes sense because batonnet means little stick in French. That's also what Ronald McDonald hits you with if you don't pay for your batonnets. Crinkle cut fries are made with a special blade called a crinkle cutter. Hey, sometimes things are easy. This type of blade can be found on a crinkle cut knife or a mandolin, the slicing tool, not the musical instrument belonging to Captain Corelli. The fry itself, which is in some ways the french fry cousin of a Ruffles potato chip, is mostly defined by its easily recognizable wave patterns, or crinkles but they also tend to be on the thicker side, in the neighborhood of a quarter to a half inch thick. In other words, this fry brought enough cake for the whole class. Their thickness means they're usually less crunchy than thinner cuts, but they're often considered ideal for dipping, which is a decent trade-off. Let's say you love the crinkle cut fry, but part of you still can't help but dream of what it would be like to push the limits of reality further. So you slide your potato over the blade of a mandolin, Rotate it 90 degrees and then grate it again. Were you so bold, you would have created a waffle fry, known in France as pomme gaufrette. Just in case you have to make conversation with Pulp Fiction's Vincent Vega, waffle fries come in a waffle-like crisscross or lattice pattern. Often served with heavy seasoning, this typically thin rectangular cut is a staple at some fast food chains and is widely regarded as a miracle of modern science, or at least it should be. Steak fries get their name from the fact that they're often served with steak, and not because you can use them to lance vampires. You eat this late, you're gonna get heartburn. But don't let that fool you. They could be served with almost anything that lends itself to a side of fries. Yum. Steak fries are another thick-cut fry that have a lot more potato filling than many other varieties. That means they're generally less crunchy, but they usually have nice crisp edges. They're also usually baked, with the potato skin still on and then dusted with salt or other seasonings, although they can be fried for an even crispier texture. Just be warned that those fluffy potato innards are going to be about a billion degrees. In 1953, Orida founders Golden Grigg, F. Neffy Grigg, and Ross Aaron Butler Sr. were looking for something to do with the little slivers that were always left over after they cut up potatoes. One day, they hit on the idea of chopping them up, adding flour and seasoning, pushing the mash through a hole, and then trimming any extruding extra spudness. The result was the delicious deep-fried cylinders the world now knows as tater tots. In fact, although most people don't realize it because the term has become so generic, tater tots is actually a proprietary name that is still owned by Orida. Hey, we've dropped enough coin on tots over the years that we've earned the right to say it. Nope. Shoestring fries, which are very popular in restaurants and diners, are named after their resemblance to, uh, well, shoestrings. For those moods when all you want to do is eat a Nike. They're made from potatoes that have been cut into very long, thin strips. That makes them a form of julienne fries that are generally defined by the fact that they're super thin, deep fried, and usually very crispy. Meanwhile, julienne is actually the name for a French cutting technique that's also sometimes known as allumette. The technique involves cutting what is usually a vegetable, in this case a potato, into long, thin strips. So if you suddenly lose your appetite, at least you still have some rad streamers for your bicycle. That being said, some people do use the two terms, shoestring and julienne, interchangeably. 
For example, in Cuban cuisine, this cut is known as papas julianas and is often used as a sandwich topping. Matchstick fries are just like shoestring fries, except they're usually shorter, vaguely the length of a matchstick, hence the name. They are essentially the French fry equivalent of potato sticks, and their thin cut means they tend to be extra crispy. Their short length means they tend to be easy to grab by the fistful. According to the officially recognized ranking system of how quickly can I eat a pound of them, this makes them the best French fry. Curly fries are the best thing to be attached to the name Curly since that guy from the Three Stooges. Nah, not that guy. Nope, not that guy. Hey, there he is. According to some sources, this fry cut, which is also sometimes known as Goldilocks fries or Suzy Q fries, is the most popular side dish at fast food chains and restaurants. Bacon cheddar curly fries, bacon cheddar curly fries, and only for $2.99. Their spring-like shape, the culinary equivalent of a slinky, or judging by the golden brown color, a motel mattress spring, is the result of a cutting technique called spiralizing, which requires a specialized spiral slicer. The shape gives the fry a wider surface area, which in turn allows it to hold more sauce or seasoning. Mm, you can really taste the curls. Tornado fries, which are basically a long, spiral-cut whole potato wrapped around a skewer and deep-fried, first emerged as a street food in South Korea. Named because of their spiral shape that kind of resembles a tornado, they're often topped with things like chili powder, garlic, paprika, honey, cheese, and onions and presumably the tears of overjoyed customers. Tornado fry skewers can be 18 or 26 inches long, and the potato sometimes comes wrapped around a hot dog or sausage. The skewer comes in handy when you need to put in your own stent. A popular favorite at fairs and festivals in many countries, they are sometimes known as twist potatoes, or just plain tornadoes. If you're in the mood for a fancy French fry, you might want to consider pomme souffle. Made from thinly sliced potatoes, this upscale cousin of the French fry is fried twice at different temperatures. Now, that is high society. The process causes the potato to puff up with air, like an evolutionary technique to make itself seem larger to predators. Invented in 1837 by chef Jules Collin, who is also credited with inventing Bernet sauce, pommes souffle are incredibly tricky to make. That means they're mostly available to the more affluent fans of French fried potatoes and tend to crop up at formal dinners. If you made a Venn diagram of French fries and potato chips, the cottage fry would sit very close to the center. Thick and round like potato doubloons, cottage fries can be baked or fried and made with or without their skin. Cottage fries are made with a corrugated slicer, which means they often have ridges that are great for holding extra seasoning. So they're often dusted with things like black or cayenne pepper, as well as other herbs and spices. Or uh, wait, is Velveeta an herb or a spice? Patatas bravas are deep fried cubes about three quarters of an inch wide. They're served topped with brava sauce, a tomato-based sauce that also includes things like garlic, paprika, olive oil, and chili. It's spicy, like flaming hot Cheetos behind your eyelids spicy. I find good. The name patatas bravas literally means spicy potatoes, or fierce potatoes, depending on who you're asking. The dish, which originated in Madrid, is commonly everywhere in Spain. It's also one of the cheaper choices among the tapas on the menu of many Spanish restaurants, which has made it the single most popular Spanish tapa. Created and manufactured by the restaurant supply company Simplot, side-winding fries, also known as sidewinder fries, are often initially mistaken for potato chips. Developed to resemble a bent elbow, presumably so it looks like it's always flexing, Sidewinders combine the shape of the cottage fry with the curl of a curly fry, like some kind of franken fry. Sidewinder fries come in varieties like buffalo, barbecue, and beer batter. And their unusual and impressive shape make them a favorite of upscale restaurants. Because even though they're still just french fries, they are perceived to elevate the appearance of main courses like fancy hamburgers. A breakfast staple throughout the United States, home fries are also known as house fries, American fries, peasant potatoes, bistro potatoes, liars hash browns, etc., etc., etc. 
Unlike many of the deep-fried entries on this list, this potato is first par-cooked, which means partially cooked by boiling, baking, steaming, or other means. It's then typically diced and pan-fried in butter and oil. Home fries often include onions, and if diced red and green peppers are thrown into the mix, they become a dish known as Potatoes O'Brien. Wait, isn't that a Star Trek character? Belgians love fries, and they eat a lot of them, both at home, at fry stands called Frietcote, and out at restaurants. They don't even care who sees. Belgian fries are a thick-cut fry made from Belgian potatoes called bincha potatoes, which are softer than many other varieties of potato. The fries are cooked in beef tallow and then very briefly deep-fried at a much higher temperature to really seal in that meat juice flavor. The process yields a soft center with a crispy outside and a savory aftertaste from the beef fat. These fries are usually served in a paper or wax cone with large quantities of a tart mayonnaise. Hailing from the mid-Atlantic United States, boardwalk fries, which are sometimes called county fair fries, are the kind of fries you're likely to find being sold by vendors at your average American carnival setting. These fries tend to be long and square cut. They're usually flavored with something like Old Bay seasoning and malt vinegar, and can be topped with cheese or even chili, or whatever else they're selling at the boardwalk, if you have the courage. As their name suggests, wedge fries are spuds cut into wedge shapes and can be baked or fried with or without skin. It's an extremely non-committal French fry. They're also thick, with several Ks. That thickness has traditionally made them easy to undercook, which often results in a fry that lacks a satisfying crunch. But when correctly prepared, wedge fries can be as good as any other cut. In fact, when seasoned with paprika and other spices and served with a sour cream, they've become something of a trendy bar food. They're also popular in the Pacific Northwest, where they're known as Jojo's, and down under in Australia, where they're called Aussie Wedges. We've got ourselves some wedges! Although they're often served in a julienne or shoestring cut, sweet potato fries are really more of a category than one particular shape. You can get sweet potato-based varieties of pretty much any cut of fries, including batonets, waffles, tater tots, and most anything else. Yes, the sweet potato is just as versatile as its pasty-faced cousin. If you're wondering why you'd want to make the switch, sweet potatoes are generally more nutritious than white potatoes, as well as being lower in calories and carbs. It's unclear how much of that health benefit they retain after being deep fried and covered with chili, but hey, it's worth a shot. So what do you think? Which french fry cut is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.